Hey guys, so my name is Danny. Welcome to Tech Talks. I got a lot, bunch of I got a bunch of questions uh, with a common theme. A lot of it is how to land a full time software engineering job, and uh, I actually read got a lot of emails. Um, one email in particular that popped out is a pretty interesting one, and you guys, it's a very common problem, and you guys might uh, watching might uh, relate and might take us a little bit out of this video, right? And so I'm going to read out the TLDR. I'm a 23-year-old with a non-CS degree. I want to be a software engineer, but I don't have any internships work experience in the industry. I want to know what's the best way to land my first full-time position as a software engineer. I know I can get a couple of refer referrals from friends working at big companies, but I don't think I'm adequately prepared in my coding skills and resume. After getting some advice, I've started reading over cracking the coding interview and doing leak code problems, but I'm worried if this is the right approach in my situation. Do you have any suggestions for me? Any and all advice would be appreciated. Well, that's a great question. I'm pretty sure it's very common. So today, I got my boy Tony, <laughs> Tony, uh, to join the video. And a little bit about Tony. Uh, he doesn't like to brag about himself, so I'll brag for him. He graduated as a software engineer at the University of Waterloo, which is in Canada. Um, he worked at a lot of various startups. Um, he interned at AvidBots, uh, which is autonomous cleaning robots. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, they're not. Commercial, they're commercial robots, so you guys probably can't buy them at Walmart. Um, he also worked at <laughs> Snapchat uh, down in LA, and then he interned uh, at Square, and then now he's back at Square for full time in SF. So Tony, what do you think? Yeah, um, when I first heard the question, I um, really wanted to help out people who are facing problems like this because I was fortunate enough to have a software or a CS degree at um, like a world-class university and although I think you can still find you can still get into the software industry without a formal degree so and a lot of people like like this person here they are just kind of without the proper resources without having a formal degree it's really it's hard to do it by yourself hopefully um, we'll have we'll answer we'll get through these questions and like get get this person like over the hump right mm-hmm yeah, I think it's tough when when you kind of feel alone. Uh, and you're kind of like, hey, I'm not in a CS degree, and but all these friends, like the majority of the norm is that you go down this path and you kind of take it, and it's kind of more guaranteed or what what not. Like, hey, you get you get into a software engineering position, but when you're kind of going the um, the path the path less uh, less um, walked on, it's kind of a lot of gray areas that to navigate. It but, seems even harder because like. He mentioned like the, he had he could get referrals from these big companies and like you know the pressure is on to like these are world class companies and like yeah. you know it's not easy to get into them. Yeah. So like, what do you think specifically? We're kind of like in an area where he could he could hone in, where anyone uh, that's in the same situation uh, can hone in to better his like to better their chances. Right. Yeah. So I think the first thing um, you have to ask yourself is like why are you interested in being in like doing software i think that's the first most important um question you have to answer because i've seen i know a lot of people who you know tech right now is a really big it's a really hot industry to be mm -hmm. in and it's like it's very well paid and so a lot of people kind of just naturally gravitate to that without really thinking about you know why they love doing what like why they want to do it in the first place and so like you know if you're you know just practicing a lot of like interview questions doing practicing lead code it's easy to feel frustrated and like feel hopeless and lost because you know no one, no one wants to just do those questions all the time and you know that's not a fully reflective of the software industry in the first place so that can immediately discourage a lot of people yeah like I think the first, always the first question is like why you're doing it, and if it's just like what you see in TV or like how you see your friends, uh, you know, succeeding or like you know, getting money, um, it's not technically, like that's not the best reason or not that's not a good reason to go into the field. Yeah. Um, like software yeah. interviews now, they're mainly, you know, we don't have a better process at the moment, but right now they're mainly all based on like you know problem solving, like leak code challenges, mm -hmm. those type of style questions. But a lot of the work you do for, on a day-to-day -day basis as a software engineer, they don't, they're not reflect, you don't have to learn all these algorithms and do solve problems like this. Um, it's, it's not reflective. And 
it's we we should change that but right now that's just how it is no, that's like it's hard to kind of pinpoint a person's uh, technical abilities uh now right like there's probably there's probably gonna be definitely there's definitely gonna be better ways in the future but now just it's just unfortunate that this is how it has to go down um but yeah what do you what do you think uh what do you, what steps or what kind of what things that they should they should do and let's say now they know that for sure that they want to be a full-time software engineer um yeah. what steps should they take or what things that they should focus on yeah um um, in, for this person specifically, like without a formal CS degree, I think it's first of all like don't expect to get a, a job at, right at the beginning out of like a really big company like Google, Facebook, like those are really top tier companies. Um, maybe even <clears throat> apply to like smaller companies, right? Mm -hmm. Where um, it's easier to get into and like you'll probably learn more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I think don't like look around, don't only apply to those big name companies. Um, like when I know a lot of people who get started um, as a software engineer, they're, they're not even doing software engineering jobs. They're, they start off as a QA, like mm -hmm. they start testing. And um, after that, they understand the whole software development process more. They get more professional experience. And then later on, they, they do software development work. Um, mm -hmm. What you can also do is like, you know, you, you can start your own projects. There are a lot of resources online to like build, like there are also a lot of like, like sectors of software. Like there are a lot of areas that you can try out and like whatever interests you, you can, you know, build a sample project out, you know, post it on GitHub, maybe join a hackathon. It's never, it's never too late to, mm -hmm. to join hackathons and yeah, build something and put on your resume. I think that's like a really good advice that people don't, they, they think they know, maybe like they've been told like, hey, do some side projects and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of them don't know how actually how powerful that is. Um, yeah. And it's like, hard to get started um, exactly. if you've never really done it before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But like if you have the, if you have the, some maybe have some friends or you could just start your projects by yourself like at home. Um, that's the best way because you could literally say and do things on your project uh, however you like. And, and I think that's a really important because you want to do storytelling and no matter what, whether you're a software engineer or like me, a product manager, um, storytelling is a very important role, especially during interviews. Um, and, and then I think that's how me personally, I, how I got started was that like I, did, I was a QA for um, as my first internship. But after that, I was like, hey, I want to get better jobs. Um, I realized that if no one's able to give me jobs. Uh, I have to like do my own side projects, do my own hackathons, uh, work with friends, you know, create something, kind of beef up my resume, and then when during interviews, even though I can't talk about my industry experience, I could be like, hey, but I did, I've done this, this, and this um, as side projects on my own time, and I'm able, and I'm able to ship it, you know, show how, see how many people are using it, and uh, and talk about it, like how it became, how I, how me, uh, myself, or a, a group of friends started from ground zero and built it up to what it is today, right? And or what it is, um, like, uh, whenever, like how you shipped it, or just a whole story along it. I think that's really important. Yeah, and for me, my first experience was actually after high school where my, my dad knew um, some, someone from a software company and I didn't have any experience back then just coming out of high school. Like, I sure I knew some like basic Java programming and stuff, but like I never worked on real software before I made a few games but like it wasn't anything serious so um, so yeah my dad found this uh, this this firm that uh, that I could go to and I just volunteered um, to to I just volunteered for them for like two months and that sort of got me into um, into the industry yeah like uh, I just, you always have to start somewhere is what you're saying and I 100% agree um, you can't just expect something that kind of uh, like, oh, these people are, are, you know, got here, here, like big top tier companies, uh, really top tier startups. Um, but you have to start somewhere to kind of gain the experience and then have that kind of knowledge within the industry. And I 100% agree. It's, it's tough, especially with non-technical degrees, because then the recruiters have to take a chance on you because they have to spend a lot of resources interviewing, hiring you. And, and the company has to take a, a big financial risk hiring you as well. The only thing that you can do that's in your control on your end, and I would say for like a lot of people with non-technical degrees, even with technical degrees, is to make yourself 
uh, prove to yourself and others um, along the way that you are able and capable of doing it. Because now it's no longer, a lot of it is like, especially in the in technology realm, it's no longer about what degree you have, it's like what you can do. And if you show that you can do and can produce, regardless if you're a software engineer, a designer, or a PM, um, if you show you can do it, no one else can tell you otherwise. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's, uh, that's a huge thing. It's, it's a very common question. Um, so if you guys have any more questions related to this, feel free to comment below and, and I'll, I'll make sure Tony, <laughs> Tony takes a look at it, even though he's super busy at Square. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I don't think we've been said like Square, Tony's on a, is a software engineer at Square. Um, specifically, I don't know, we just said that you worked at Square. I think I think it's a safe assumption, okay? It's a safe <laughs> assumption. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to drop some comments below or email us. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, Tony. Yeah, of course.